Oh boy. What's up good people? Mark Holmes here and as always I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys. As well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Well, it's Sunday night. I'm back here at the Red Brick House. I made it. It was actually windy as hell and actually snow was falling down. And it's kind of crazy because two days ago it was like 65 degrees. And I think uh, by Tuesday it's going to be like 65 degrees. You know, if you, you, you want some different weather, just wait a day. It'll totally be different. So we're sitting here. I was talking to my man, Game Time Brian. Shout out to Game Time, the mailman. And I'm glad he didn't have to go out and deliver mail in that wind and stuff today. Hopefully it won't be too bad tomorrow when he gets back to work. And he was like, well, why are you getting back down here? You know, you went back home this morning. I had to take care of, care of dropping some stuff off. And he's like, why did you worry, hurry to come back? Well, my wife has to be here to take care of some things and all that. And I wanted to be here because tomorrow at 12 o'clock begins Free Agent Frenzy. And Brian was like, yeah, but that really doesn't start until Wednesday at 4 o'clock. True. Technically, it doesn't, but here's the reality of everything. Now, tomorrow, legally, teams are allowed to talk to free agents. And, excuse me, free agents, um, agents, and basically hammer out contract deals. They just can't be finalized until after Wednesday at 4 o'clock. And here's what you have to understand, because it doesn't really make sense. Because you've already heard about some teams that have already re-signed some players of theirs to, you know, contracts and so on. You've heard about Russell Wilson going for a visit with the Giants and so on. And it's kind of like, how is this not already legal tampering? We've heard about, you know, agents and things that'll be at the Combine and teams talking to agents and stuff there. So how is that not already legal tampering? But what you'll see tomorrow is you'll start hearing about, you know, deals and things or teams that are interested in a guy and so on. And they'll say, you know, they've got, got a plan in place and won't be finalized until, of course, Wednesday. So you'll start to get that first wave out the way. Now, of course, I don't expect the Cowboys to do anything the first couple of days. They're, of course, going to wait until the dust clears. But here's where... There are players out there that could help your team if you are willing to pay the price. Bobby Wagner, who had 183 tackles, which is just unbelievable last year, even though he is not the same player he was five or six years ago, is not going to be, or does not look like he's returning to Seattle. So he is a free agent. And just about 30 minutes ago, one of the key pieces on San Francisco's defense. Uh, on the defensive line, Eric Armstead. Eric Armstead, who had 27 tackles and five sacks as a defensive tackle, was a very big part of that defense. Because, see, here's what you have to understand. You can't have just one great player. When you're talking about defense and defensive fronts, see, Micah Parsons is an incredible pass rusher. He really is. He is an incredible person that can chase people down. But the problem with Micah Parsons is, Micah Parsons is a little bit on the smaller side. Micah Parsons, if you're running right at him, it's difficult for him to be able to take on a 330, 340 pound tackle when he's giving up 80, 90 pounds and they're drive blocking. Now he can make moves to go around them and things like that, but run game is different. And this is where you need those big studs, those immovable forces that are in the middle. You need a guy on the other end. Because ultimately, we've seen Micah Parsons double and triple teamed and so on. If I have one guy that's getting double and triple teamed, then those other guys need to be feasting. And see, Eric Armstead having um, Chase Young, having Bosa over there, having... Hargrave over there that they had studs all the way across and then they had great linebackers and that's why they were able to shut down the run when you're talking about a running game they're going to find your weak spot and they're going to attack it and we were truly soft up the middle we didn't have the stud defensive linemen 
and we ended up having a safety, Marquez Bell, who was too undersized to truly be a linebacker. And if the Cowboys are going to be able to, as Jerry Jones finally points out, you know, if you talk about culture being you can't stop the run, you can't run the football, then we got a culture problem. Yeah, well, you've definitely got a run-stopping problem. And the only way you're going to stop it is getting people who can handle the middle of the field. And that is linebacker. That is defensive line. And I don't think that you're going to be able to just do this from the draft, especially now that you're losing Tyron Smith, who seems to have a big market out there for his services. You're probably going to have to draft the offensive line with that first pick. And that means the defense is put on the back burner. And unfortunately, we have some serious holes that we need to fill, and six-round draft picks aren't going to be the case. Now, the Cowboys, they want to. They want to. They can look at this and say, and this is where, coming down the road, I I did a 30-minute video because it's basically a, a stream of consciousness just trying to get my ass down the road before the sun went down. And in it, this is where I wish that Stephen Jones would... Wow. That wind is... I was just like, what is that? It felt like my chair was moving the way it sounded. But it's the wind that is just like, literally, we're getting some serious wind gusts. And when you can hear a brick house with the wind going against it like that, then you know it's gusting. Um, but I wish Stephen Jones would just say, you know what, for one year, we're going to just try and go all in. We're going to go ahead and we're going to try and bring in a few ringers. And I don't think you need a whole lot of great players. If you get Derek Henry, if you go out, and I saw an article where they were linking Patrick Queen to the Cowboys, which I don't think so because... We're talking about a guy that's probably going to get $80, $90 million contract uh, out on the free market. And we know that the Cowboys aren't going to do that. But, in my mind, in 2018, if they had taken the idea I had, signing a DeMario Davis, we wouldn't be having the discussions right now about linebacker because that guy has been an absolute positive stud in the middle and has complete stability for New Orleans in the middle of their field. And the question you have to say is, how much is that worth? Because without it, you ain't winning. Just not. So, I'm a little tired. It's been a long day. I put about 300 miles of driving behind me. Um, But it was a good day. Tomorrow, We'll see what we're going to see. We'll see if the Cowboys start working on at least getting some more room, even if they're not making any moves on anybody outside of the building. I would just like to be able to report that the Cowboys are doing something going in the right direction because I see so many teams that have gone out here and are in a position to try to improve their situation. And I want to see the Cowboys do that. I don't expect it, but I really want to see it. And I think for once, I actually got the fuel just right. That or I've just talked a lot more tonight. Um, and that's all I got to say about that. So, good people. Whew. Appreciate the day that you've had. Remember to tell the people you love how much you love them. And... Let's try to be a little bit nicer to each other. We have so much hate and animosity and jealousy in the world. And the thing is, you want to think globally, but you want to act locally. So the change that you want, things you want to see happen, they got to start here first and then spread out. I love you guys and I appreciate each and every one of you. And God willing, 
I'll see you guys in the morning. Peace.